Well, we are here again with the beautiful Antonia Albano because we had a little sound trouble last time. And so we want to make sure that we hear from Antonia all the wonderful things that she has to share. And, uh, and I'm super psyched that we <laughs> carved out, we're both so busy, but we were determined to, to get this information to everybody because it's really unique and important. And it's going to lead into something that we'll be doing in the future. So, um, so with no further ado, here is my beautiful friend, Antonia. So let's start out with just giving a little history, a little bit about where you were before back way back like in the uh, times in California and then what brought you all the way to the beautiful Blue, Hill, Blue Ridge Mountains? Let's get a little uh, background. Uh, well, I uh, spent 20 years in uh, Sausalito, California and started out in the corporate world. So um, the last several years I had moved from corporate America to the healing professions and my now husband and I opened up a institute north of San Francisco called the California Institute for Mind Body Awareness. And we had uh, 10 to 14 healthcare practitioners in a classroom space with multiple um, happenings per day. And uh, it just started the, um, desire to travel and to spread um, awareness of the connection of the mind, body, um, heart, and spirit. And so we ended up leaving on a sailboat. <laughs> so um, I didn't realize it until later that um, I really needed the umbilical cord removed or severed from my connection to Sausalito and to Northern California. I needed to move, but I wasn't willing to move and didn't know I needed to move. And I like to say that uh, sometimes we think we want to be rooted. And I became very aware that I wanted, I really needed to be repotted, mm. not, not rooted. I was way too young to be rooted. And mm. I going to grow older in Northern California. And I would, I would be there with my friends and my horse and my business and my husband. And, um, and I was just ready to settle in. And it wasn't until I was out on a circumnavigation and ended up being six years, not 10 years, but um, out on a boat, uh, kind of looking back and realized that I really needed to have that, that softer way of cutting that umbilical cord. Uh, I had, at the time, I kind of felt like I was being ripped out, but I wanted to go. And uh, anyway, we ended up on the East Coast uh, wintering in Annapolis and planning on crossing the pond. And um, I said that I kind of felt like I had lost my nerve to cross the open ocean, especially 21 days worth. Um, so anyway, some, somehow, I think, I mean, I know, totally spirit guided. We ended up in uh, the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia um, after my husband said he didn't want to go back to California. And uh, that was a shock to me because I really honestly had planned to circumnavigate, come back under the Golden Gate Bridge and, and in my new pot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and kind of spend the rest of my life there. But it, it, the spirit had something else in mind, and I didn't know it at the time. So we ended up, uh, after two, three years of being in Lexington, Virginia, we ended up purchasing 250 acres of gorgeous farmland, rolling hills in the middle of the Shenandoah Valley. And um, somehow <laughs> ended up creating this incredible, beautiful retreat that was not necessarily the conscious intention. So hope it was like, um, you know, it was like one of those things that was step by step by step by step. And then you look back and go, oh, <laughs> oh, oh bread, bread I, see, crumbs. <laughs> I see that thread. I just didn't know that I was sewing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so we've got this beautiful um, retreat center. Well, let me let me just back up a sec because we're going to go deep into that. Um, 
but I want to make sure everybody understands what circumnavigating means. It means you're on a boat sailing on the oceans around the world, <laughs> yeah. not, not a cruise ship. Right, right. A, how big was the boat? Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. How big was the boat? 36 feet. It, okay. was, it was a blue water boat. Okay. So just, just, <laughs> I am a sailor. I've sailed big boats and little boats. I've done ocean racing. 36 feet is about the minimum that you need to, as you say, go into the blue water. That's not an easy thing. That is one of the most daring things there is to do. And uh, I just sort of want to make sure we draw a little focus to that. Because <laughs> that would feel to me like yanking roots. I don't know. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, just, I just think it's important to understand that there's a certain kind of person who would take that on. Not everybody would do that. So you're, you've got this adventure explorer aspect of yourself. So what's interesting to me is you also have, it seems to me, a, a part that wants to settle down, settle in to land because land is so important to you. So you have these two, maybe sometimes competing uh, aspects of yourself. And you, for six years to be traveling around on a 36 foot boat, I think that probably worked out a lot of those kinks. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I just love that story so much. And I wanted to make sure everybody heard it and understood, um, you know, the, 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 the depth of it. I mean, it's a big deal. And, and you know, uh, there's a little meme that goes around every now and then where uh, I see this little video where somebody's on a cruise ship, obviously for the first time at night. And, and there's a little bubble that says, oh, <laughs> they're all of a sudden realizing they're in the dark, they're out at sea and they're on a boat. Of course, it's a massive boat, but they kind of go, uh? you know, I wasn't expecting that. So anyway, to be, to be on a little, uh, fairly, a relatively small boat and, and be doing all that is, uh, is gigantic. So, okay. <laughs> then you were you were in uh, uh, Wilmington, right, for a little while. Uh, Annapolis. Oh, Annapolis. Mm -hmm. And Barney said, you know, the, there's two places I want to live, and one of them is the Shenandoah Valley. Oh, that was, me. That was, oh, that me. was you. Yeah, actually, Barney said that he didn't want to go back to California, and um, I cried for like two months. I, I mean, I had really, honestly, the deal was to go 10 years around the world back under the Golden Gate. Um, I had left the business. I had left a, a beautiful circle of 20 year friends. I had a horse. <laughs> I mean, I, I really had planned on going back. And so when he said he didn't want to go back, he had been there 36 years and did not like what it had become. It wasn't what he had moved to and he didn't like the real estate and he didn't like the traffic. Yeah. And um, I cried and cried and started suggesting other towns and other places. And finally, um, he, I really got that he, he had been there 36 years and did not want to go back. And so I said there, I, I and I know people don't, may not understand this, but I, my independent Sagittarian self said, I love you dearly, but I will not follow you anywhere. Um, ge geography to me is really important. Um, and I'm, I'm not just going to follow somebody somewhere. Um, and so he said, okay, where would you consider moving? And so I said, give me, you know, a day or two. And I came back and I said, the state of Washington and Virginia. And um, I had not spent any time in Virginia. So obviously that was um, definitely spirit guided. But I'd also been an equestrian for several decades, and I was a member of the San Francisco Hunt. Um, and some friends of mine had wanted to be landowners and couldn't afford it, so they had moved to Virginia. I had a date for the Hunt Ball, who had come, who had lived in, it was from England, and had purchased a plantation <laughs> in Virginia because of the prices being so reasonable, even though we had a place in California. And another couple from Los Angeles had moved to Virginia, et cetera. And I like these people, 
And uh -huh. so my feeling was, is I like the people, if I like the people and it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Very good. Um, Very Annapolis good. is a bedroom community for DC and I didn't know that. Um, we were still on the sailboat and I wasn't paying attention to real estate prices, but I knew that they were extremely high. And uh, if you're gonna move out of California, why would you wanna to go to another high cost of living space? So um, anyway, that's, that's what got us here. So you, so the next story that I love is, is that you found this property with the intention of <laughs> building the beautiful house on the top of the hill with the view behind that we are seeing behind you. Yeah. Who, would, who wouldn't want to do that? I mean, that's totally logical. And so you go up there and you start making plans and something happens. <laughs> Actually, I had a girlfriend come up to see it also, and I was showing her the the, um, the house site, and she said, "Oh, this is way too beautiful to be to have all by yourself. You need to share this with people." And I said, "This is going to be our house." She said, "You need to share this. This is way too too beautiful to not." It's got a 360 degree view, which Hope knows, um, and it's it's a beautiful. Um, beautiful, incredible vistas between the uh, smoky, the, well, the Blue Ridge Mountains and the Alleghenies. And so you can see the ranges all around. So anyway, yeah, um, I had planned to build a home and we purchased the property with log cabins on it. The previous owner over 30 years had, um, had brought one cabin at a time and he and a couple of his buddies who just put it together and obviously put in plumbing and electricity and had a second bedroom or had a bedroom and had a oh, well let's let's be clear these were antique cabins from various places that were dismantled and yeah. brought to the yeah. property so yeah. they are bona fide <laughs> antique cabins we call them authentic rustic historic log cabins modernized modernized so that they are as cozy and as adorable as you can imagine and placed into the woods in such a way I mean you really feel like you step back in time you know and and yet you're totally comfortable and um you know I just okay so I want to just say that Antonia was my guest for the month of June and the theme for the month of June was grace. And the reason I chose Antonia is because uh, I feel that she embodies grace in the way that she handles life's twists and turns and the way she continues to say yes to spirit when it speaks to her. And even at the sacrifice of taking what could have been a, a just an incredible home and, um, and instead, allowing that that hilltop not only to be shared by others but we're going to talk about how you have responded to the, with the geometries but i just wanted to note that the name of that hill is <laughs> mount grace yeah. so you can see now that the theme is really and i didn't remember that when i chose antonia for grace i had completely <laughs> forgotten and then yeah. <laughs> yes. And then when I went in May to be there for the for the blessing for that wonderful May 1st blessing, um, somebody you somebody said Mount Grace. And I went, oh my gosh, <laughs> I completely forgot. <laughs> By then yeah. we had already decided that you would be my guest. So um, so it's perfect. So let's talk about um Let's talk about the geometries and what, how that began in you, where your attraction happened, how you, how you sort of went, went along that path. Well, we were talking about the thread that seems to weave through um, all of our directions when we look back, the vantage point. And um, when I look back, everything in my life has been about love. <laughs> I mean, a lot of us love love. <laughs> Um, and romance and all the things that go with but all my studies and all of my meditations and everywhere I've gone and things that I've been really attracted to are kind of love related 
So when I did a modern day, I call it a modern day uh, vision quest, um, we had purchased a bed and breakfast to make a transition because we hadn't worked in six years, so we needed some income. <laughs> um, and it was on Barney's bucket list, so we, we did the bed and breakfast. But I knew that as soon as we purchased this property that something was really in the works, but I couldn't quite hand, get a handle on it because it hadn't happened yet. And so a friend of mine said, well, why don't you come out to Seattle area, Kitsap Peninsula, and um, I'll give you my... Um, motorhome and come on out and um, spend a few days and I said okay I'll do a modern day vision quest I'll have a motorhome by myself and and um, you know my food and I can meditate and just be with so anyway long story short is I at midnight one night I was just sketching and I started to sketch this heart and infinity and as you all know that Hope works with an equilateral infinity, and she's the first person I know who has taken it out of the mathematics and actually been spoken to by infinity um, as to how it can be used in an incredible way. And I started drawing something that was um, an infinity, obviously, but a very differently proportioned infinity. So, um, a friend of mine who was going back to British Columbia just wanted to say goodbye. And normally on a vision quest, I wouldn't be even thinking about talking to anybody. But he said, I want to stop by and say goodbye before I go back to British Columbia. And I said, OK, come on over. And he walked in the door and he looked down and he said, did you mean to draw that that way? And I said, yes, why? And he said, I believe it's a golden ratio. And I it just kind of something inside of me just went like this and um, I then began to know, I just knew that it was a golden ratio infinity. And I knew it was the infinity family, but everything I've researched for 17, 18 years, there's no mention of a golden ratio infinity for a specific mathematical proportion for a specific purpose. Everything has a shape. Everything that has a shape has a purpose, right? whatever it manifests because of its shape. Um, because it moves energy. So that became the, um, the main, that I was so in love with the um, geometry you see behind me. Um, normally the, the two circles are not around. That's another story. There's a reason for it, but the, the infinite open heart, which is always open to give and to receive and the golden ratio infinity are the, the, the core of every geometry that has come through since. And I did not know any others were going to come through. I was so in love with this. And when I came back to, when I came back to Virginia, Barney said, I haven't seen you this excited about anything in a long time. It's really pretty, but you're so excited. And I said, yeah, I want to do a reflecting pool. And I want to, I want to do something where I, I do something with it. I want to have a day of celebration called the celebration of love which I've had 21 of <laughs> since. Um, and um, when I, in meditation, I asked where it was to be put. And I meant in the etheric. I never thought about it being in sculpture. I was going, well, at that mo point, point, I was talking about where would it be placed? And I heard the words in my head, top of the hill. And in my head, I said, mm, that's where our home is going to be. And there was silence. I mean, silence. Mm -hmm. And about 20 seconds later, I heard the words, top of the hill. <laughs> and I released it like that. It was like instantaneous. The, the home site that we still have never built um, went down to the top of the second hay field. I, I just didn't even question it. So it was a year and a half later that others started coming in and it's only in hindsight that I saw what was happening um, and what had happened and how they all came together, et cetera. And that's a different story. So. This, this hillside, this hilltop now has how many? Um... Well, two of them are, are too complicated to actually make in steel. And so, 
there is a one, two, three, four, five, five sculptures of the geometries and one that I call the witness, which is called the celebration, which stands outside the circle, literally as a garden guardian and a witness mm -hmm. to what's going on inside. So they, these are on poles, 17 feet tall mm -hmm. or something, right? Yeah. And um, I, I can only imagine that they are broadcasting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> they are both broadcasters and receivers. And receivers. So it's inoculating, in a way, the, the land itself, pulling, pulling it down, and then it's also broadcasting. Oh, and and so in a much bigger um, area than the average person might think. They might think that they're just like right there on the hilltop. I've had people tell me they can feel them on the air, on the runways in Washington. When the, once they've been on our property and they're connected with it, they can actually you know just just they can feel it. And it, it's it's big. It it really is big. I'm, I'm not surprised. I mean, the, we don't even know, I mean, just like with the infinity wave, we don't know the full extent of it. You know, we're, we're just mm -hmm. going along and doing what asks to be done next. next. Um, and it's okay. It's okay not to know. And it's very cool when you hear that from somebody who's, uh, I felt it was sitting in my plane on the tarmac, <laughs> you know, that's pretty cool. These things can, can go just because we know it's quantum energy we're dealing with here. Yeah. In fact, one quick, quick story, I won't even go into the details, but there's a, a woman in Washington state that is extremely sensitive to energy. And I had that after she had to leave the property when her husband worked with the vortex because she couldn't stand being anywhere near the property so she would go away for the afternoon and one day when i was visiting i asked permission to actually put a, an infinite love geometry in its correct rotations proportions and rotations and colors um, on this vortex and i got permission to do that and when this woman came back home in the afternoon, she told us that she could feel the shift in the vortexual energy a couple miles out. Wow. Just by doing that and asking the vortex to take it into the earth. Mm. And that it softened, it, it softened the, the energy of the vortex um, noticeably. I mean, she could feel it. And so she came back saying, what, what did you guys do? Mm. Uh, so yeah, so it, it, as you said, your infinity wave, um, the golden ratio infinity, the infinite love, these broadcast in ways, yeah. not only out, I have also worked with them and asked the earth to take them in. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can totally see that happening. And you know, it reminds me of the standing stones and, and also those peace poles that were put in all over the earth. Mm -hmm. And and they understood how what a wide range those peace poles had, quite quite large. So it it all makes perfect sense. And and I can say that it had been quite a few years since I had been to Highland South Highland Farm. And um, and when I got out of the car on uh, on the thirtieth of May, I mean April, yeah. my head went boink. I mean, I had to hang on to things because it was supercharged. Yeah. Uh, it, it, had, it has changed over time, even since I've been there. So, you know, um, but what I love, I love this, this, the way the frequency of infinite love uh, is so present on your property. And, and I'm sure that I know the workshop that I held there was really beautiful. And it was, I'm not take, I'm not, I'm saying that not to take, you know, total credit for it. The, the land is singing, the, the place supports and magnifies this love uh, in such a way. And it just, you know, if we just pay attention, I mean, you have the benefit of all the geometries and the hill and all of those things, but even if we just take that mindfulness into our own lives, 
you know, just paying attention to walking around in that state of infinite love. You know, we are broadcasters too. Absolutely. And one of the things I wanted to say, Hope, um, to everybody, we were talking about when you first invited me to speak on, on grace and I just went, I don't know that I can say anything that would be impactful, but the more I thought about it, it was like, oh my gosh, my, not only has my whole life been, been blessed, um, not only with life and, and health and the rest, but it has been graced. Um, and I really realized as I focused on grace, it's like asking a fish to describe the ocean when <laughs> the fish is coming out of the tree in the forest. I was living in grace moment by moment. And I, it's, I, I don't know that I could say I don't, I didn't know, but I wouldn't have defined it that way. Mm -hmm. But I really got um, that grace has just been, I have just been immersed in grace since, especially since um, I started receiving the geometries, but grace is alive to me. Um, grace is a state of being. Mm -hmm. And um, what I realized before you and I connected today is as I wrote it down, it was like, it just came right through me and it says, grace is a living prayer. And then I went, oh my gosh, the new labyrinth, the golden labyrinth is called the golden living prayer labyrinth. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, and so the elementals call this the land of grace. That's, that's what they call it. Um, the Mount, the hilltop, it was named Mount Grace by the fellow who actually um, came from out of town. I had never met before, but he said it was a spiritual project. He wanted to be involved. He was brought by a friend and we were countersinking the first section in 2012. We were countersinking 288 cement, handmade cement pavers. And this fella came and did 90% of it. And he said, as he was walking up the mountain one day or the hilltop, <laughs> um, it's not really a mountain. <clears throat> He said, you know, I'm going to call this Mount Grace. And I said, Michael, why? He said, well, Moses had a vision on Mount Grace, and you've had a vision. And so this is Mount Grace. And I said, do you know that the labyrinth in the center there is called the Grace Walk? He said, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the, the hilltop is called Mount Grace. The entire space of the hilltop is called the State of Grace Pulsation Center. Oh. The golden cross is um, the actual geometry that's that has been laid out in the ground. But I say, but it's got four golden ratio infinities that comprise it. And one of them is called grace. It's the, the four of them are elegance and grace, simplicity and beauty. And they're all woven together. Um, and the grace walk is called a phi infinity creation. And that was the original two interwoven golden ratio infinities. And the current one is called the grace walk, a golden living prayer labyrinth. So I am walking the grace walk <laughs> and was so immersed in it. I didn't, I, I, I never knew how, I wouldn't have defined it that way but it is it's it, it's a blessing it's a blessing it truly is and you've continued to say yes to all of these uh new mm -hmm. geometries you know and how you put them together and and where they go and so i mean we all are uh, can only be incredibly grateful for to you for following following through and, and at, you know, a lot of time, a lot of expense to, to make this happen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, it's not a minor thing at all. No, it, it's major and it is a major commitment in my life and it is, um, it's shaped my life yes. uh, as this has been a journey for me too, to um, acknowledge that, um, to acknowledge that shape, motion, color, and sound create and manifest, manifest matter, manifest our energy, and that what it manifests is something 
that you only learn when you work with it. Yeah. So when I was even drawing the original, <clears throat> when I it took me three years to find the right sculptor. When I did, and he didn't want any part of any decision, so he said, you do the template, you do the mock-ups, um, you, you know, give me, what you, I want you to show me what you want because I don't want any misinterpretation. So I would be sitting there for sometimes hours going, well, a little bit higher here, a little bit wider there. And it wasn't until I finally, because I would look at it and I'd remeasure it and I'd keep going, mm, 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 and I kept going, and, they, and I mentally I kept getting, no, a little bit over here, a little bit over there. And when I finished, there was a feeling of, ah, oh. yeah. And I'm sure it's the way a composer, you know, works yeah. and, and an artist work. And so you really listen. You have to listen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm surprised at what I get, but this has been a total immersion for me in the journey of sacred geometry and how shape and motion, color, sound, vibrational frequency actually affect our entire I mean I've always been involved with it but not to this extent and all of it was the groundwork everything that I have read and studied everything all of us do when we look back and we see oh my gosh it looked like that tangent was going way over here and I'm way over here but when you look back you're gathering information and it comes back into this weave and you go, oh, I know, I know that. I, I learned that when I was over there. Um, so yeah, I, it's been an incredible journey and I'm honored to, to share that with you. And I really look forward to what we're going to be doing. In fact, talk about listening to spirit about a couple months ago. If I, can I mention this? Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. A couple months ago, it just went flying through my, I call it my mind field. It just went flying through and it went, you and Hope teaching, uh, teaching together on the infinities. And then right after that was like an airplane pulling a trailer. And it, and it said, the magic and alchemy of the infinities. And I went, oh, <laughs> okay. So I run it by Hope and she said, yeah, yeah. We really, can do that. <clears throat> we can do that. The magic and alchemy of the infinities, equilateral infinity, golden ratio infinity, and the magic of this whole um, aspect of infinity coming to the public, not just as a mathematical symbol. Um, yes, yes. So much more. You know, and that that's what's so kind of interesting to me too, is that you started doodling with your beautiful design uh, before the infinity wave came in to me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, um, but what I'll say is that when the infinity wave did present itself to me, I immediately, and didn't give an explanation for what it was initially. So I didn't know why this thing was hanging out in front of my head for three days. Well, of course, what do we do? We go and Google what the heck what's what about infinity you know what's and there was nothing about it and nobody nobody was using it as a symbol for anything I looked in packaging jewelry you know yeah. it wasn't anywhere and and one of the things that the uh, original vision said was that this was a an energetic that was going to be wrapping around the planet and anchoring in at the end of 2011 and I was supposed to start teaching my workshops in 2011, which I did, you know, we, that's a whole other story. But I kept looking around because I know I can't be the only one receiving this if this is legitimate. So I had a whole year of going, <laughs> is this really real? <laughs> and then sure enough, January 2012, somebody hands me a cappuccino with infinity in the foam. And then I see it on the sidewalk and then I, and I start to see it, start to see it. And we all know where it is today, only everywhere. Every single logo has it in. They don't know why, <laughs> but you know, it's, it, it's a thing that had, that needed to come into the consciousness of planet earth, you know? And so, I mean, you and I will be exploring this when we do our, our workshop, I'm sure. Um, 
but it's it's so exciting to be connecting with another person such as yourself who has been listening and working with these shapes uh, for so long and, and, and continuing to say yes, <clears throat> and then seeing it unfold mm -hmm. on the world stage. Mm -hmm. you know, it's um, interesting because I've been on the internet for 18 years and there has never been any mention of a golden ratio shaped infinity honoring or even mentioned um, honoring the qual what I call the quality of the physics of that particular vibration. Um, yes, a lot of people in the last number of years have started doing smaller tops, larger bottoms because it's aesthetically pleasing, but mathematically they're not exact. And unless it's absolutely exact, it doesn't give you the vibration that it is specifically asking for. Right. Um, so the others are lovely. But I also want to say that it was one of the very first that was standing up. Mm -hmm. And um, even now, if you uh, Google infinity and a heart, 90% of them are horizontal. Mm -hmm. So when you, anybody who's done, I, I was exposed to a friend, I mean, a woman that is now a friend um, who does placement of rocks and stones. And she's really had some examples of when you stand a stone up that's been lying down for a long time. And I mean, I've felt it, the entire vibration shifts. And I'm sure it does. So it's the same thing with our infinities. It's like, it's taking it from the horizontal, which is where it's been seen, mm -hmm. um, to the vertical. Yeah. And, you know, and, and then for, for me, the golden ratio, because it became what I, I used to call it the driver. And one of the student, I say students in, um, <clears throat> in one of my retreats um, said, well, instead of driver, it's probably more like a coordinator. And we started playing with that. It was like the choreographer of how a choreographer will, will hand select the players with that will, that will be able to express what that choreographer once expressed. And so this golden ratio infinity is, is present in every single geometry I've done, which culminate in the seventh, which is the unified field system of love for the next 2000 to 2500 years, that they're actually saying that, that they're holding that, that kind of a frequency. And so it's, it's exciting. And I'd like you, I mean, I, I stand back and go, oh my God, do I have to really, I, I have to say this, I don't understand it. Um, you're asking me to stand forward and, and do this. And I'm saying, but I, but I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And then I keep getting this feeling of, yes, you do know. <clears throat> it's just not conscious. That's so nice. It's been an amazing journey. And as I said, I have been immersed in grace. I walk the grace walk. It's on our land. My life is walking a grace walk and um, not even being aware of it sometimes. Feeling yeah. blessed, but never using the word grace or being graced. I like that. You know, it's kind of a verb also. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So I'm glad I could just be a little reflector for you to <laughs> help you realize, yes, that's why I, you were my number one pick for Grace. Thank um, you. Yeah, no, I, I'm so happy to know you. And um, anyway, I, I wanted to also mention, um, this, this will be looked at far into the future, but um, Actually, I, I won't mention, but I know that besides our workshop together, I'll be down there. We'll be doing other things together on that beautiful land. And I can't wait. Uh, I think about it quite a lot and uh, with so much fondness. So um, anybody who is interested in doing a retreat, there are not just cabins down there. There's a beautiful lodge with comfortable rooms and little cat little studio cabins and all kinds of features beautiful gardens and uh fire pit and all kinds of stuff so uh people can just go to south mm -hmm. highland 
farm and, and um, do your own little retreat, you mm-hmm. know, or join somebody like me or Antonia and, and do a whole workshop. Um, there's all kinds of things. So I'm going to put in the chat the best uh, email for that. South Highland. South River Highlands. South River, sorry. South River Highlands Retreat, is it? Dot com. South River Highlands Retreat dot com. Just South River Highlands dot com. Oh. It's its full name is South River Highlands Country Retreat, but not on the website. Okay. South River Highlands dot com is in the chat for anybody who is interested and uh, wants to check it out. It, it's I highly, highly recommend it. <clears throat> and it's beautiful almost any time of year, right? Mm-hmm. We're, we're open full time. Yeah. Um, if you would like to give people my personal website, which is just my name dot com, um, they can see some of the things I'm doing also. All righty, there that is. Yeah, because you're up to all kinds of things and you have gatherings and all kinds of activities down there. I do, and I have a five-day retreat coming up in November, the week before yours. Right. So hopefully people will um, poke around and get intrigued and come and see y'all down there. And uh, so... Anything, any parting words for us? I want to say follow your heart, but um, that's not always the case. Sometimes I think it's following your intuition, and that's not always your heart. I had a very clear message in the end of the 90s, and and I had been uh, practicing, I mean, when we opened up the Institute, um, I actually had a private practice as a transformational coach and energetic worker and hypnotherapist. And obviously I kept talking to people about following their heart. And I got a very clear message that said, following your heart works for most people most of the time. Not you, not now, you have work to do. So if you feel that you're getting a message that says you have a very specific you know, work to do, follow it. <laughs> and if your intuition says, follow your heart, follow your heart. But whatever information you're getting, even if it sounds strange and you think you're a little crazy, <laughs> um, trust it and walk with it and hold it and talk to it. It'll talk to you. Every one of these has spoken to me. I have seen energetics around them. I have gotten prose. I've gotten songs. I have gotten, um, I've gotten so much from, from these. They are living. They truly are living intelligences. And so if you work with anything that has shape, um, whatever or whatever you're working with it honor it honor it talk to it uh tell it you love it and uh, ask it to guide you so that would be kind of what i would say that's beautiful and to draw the distinction between your heart and your intuition i think that's very interesting that's very interesting and i guess i i um i feel like they're they're like that but that doesn't mean it's always what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, uh, but that's, that's very, very helpful, Antonia. Thank you. I think people will, will enjoy that. Thank you. It's, All right, my dear. it's a real pleasure. I look forward to seeing you out. Pleasure here. is mine. Seeing you out here in a few months. I know, I can't wait. <laughs>